Good evening. Oh, I'm not. I'm not in screen now. There I am. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. How are you all doing tonight? Or uh, today, or whenever it is. Really, could be any time. A uh, bit of a bit of a hectic start to uh, today's stream. Only, uh, only just got my child to sleep. Gonna move this mic a second. There we go. How's that? Probably okay. Um, so yeah, little bit, a uh, little bit, a little bit rushed in terms of uh, start. Luckily, I already know what I want to play tonight. Um, I was going to build something on stream, but basically, I have been having too much fun with this deck, um, and I just wanted, I, I like. I kind of just want to, any excuse I can to play this. Yeah, you see, I was going to buy, it was going to be a Jatinio deck uh, that I was going to build today, but it's it's not going to be. Um, mainly because they decided to only give Kit 10 influence, which means that you can't, you physically can't play Jatinio in Kit. How funny. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, lots of lots of stuff going on on the weekend. Let's have a, a little look at all the stuff. There's like news. There was um, uh, you can insert that comment right there, Axu. We, we all know. We all know. We'll see what happens, eh? Um, so lots of big tournaments on the weekend. We had the first AMT, which was pretty crazy. Um, really good showing from from the tiebreakers. Um. Uh, Jai coming in second, Seb K, uh, new tiebreaker member coming in third, um, Augustus in fourth, and I think Alex in like sixth or seventh as well, like like really solid showing. Uh, but shout out to the king who took the whole thing down. I can't be I can't be that upset. Uh, and then there was also uh, the first um, NANPC. Um, which looked like it was quite a blast. Uh, Sid Seven taking a knife deck and coming in second. I don't know. I mean, this one is really heavy on the knife idea. So I assume that this was winning via knife. Um, but there is a fun thing, which you can kind of do this crim uh sort of control thing where as soon as you start showing knives or particularly as soon as you start sort of scoring uh a jetinio then the court has to go uh all right oh, well i've got to slow down and ice up centrals a little bit and then they struggle to actually win some of the time so um i think jetinio is even more interesting um as opposed to just being good because it kind of it kind of opens up this other corp win con of like I'm not necessarily you don't ne you don't even have to necessarily win via Jatinio, but having it there as a threat is quite the threat. <clears throat> um Sid Seven also uh smashing out the powers at B. Definitely think that that's a good card. And this card here, Cohort Guidance Program, is now a card that I've seen in two decks, which I found really interesting. And I'm not going to lie, I wasn't particularly high on this card, mainly because it trashes for only two, and I didn't want to have to read all the text and work out what it actually did. Um, but I, seeing it, like... In this deck, and the fact that you can kind of never advance four twos with it, even never advance a five three with it if you've got two of them down. Seeing the deck that Andre played on stream last week, where he was kind of throwing agendas into the bin and then reclaiming them so that he could hollow man them, like there's some nonsense to be done here. And I think this this card might be a, a fair bit stronger than I'd I'd imagined, and given it um 
kind of given it uh, leeway for. Uh, but yeah, this seems fun. Um, and then what else? So Seb played uh, uh, Inception. Excellent name. This was essentially um, this is essentially a, a a Seb deck, but in as which actually I really like. It's a very different take to the Seb deck in as which I built, which maybe we'll play that on um on stream next week. But I kind of realised that with Meeting of the Minds, you can find you know your DJ Fenris to get Seb down really really early. And actually, in a deck which is going to be a Sebastian deck, as soon as you get a meeting of minds down, you're going to have a ton of connections. You're already going to have a ton of connections. So you probably are only paying like one or maybe even less. Like maybe you're doing meeting of minds like after you've put down um, a class act and you actually gain money from doing this. So this is definitely like something that I'm very interested in. Haven't actually played any Seb yet. So that, I mean, maybe I should play Seb in Seb before I start playing Seb in As, but, you know, I don't know. Everyone else seems to be um very high on Seb, and I'm not surprised. Uh, the main reason I haven't really played any Seb is because I've just been having too much fun playing Kit. Um, those of you who know me know that I'm a, I'm a big Shaper fan. The only reason that I don't play Shaper in a lot of sort of competitive tournament tournaments is that it's generally not been strong it hasn't had the sort of the disruption and it hasn't had the wink on and that's meant that you've had to import a load of stuff for influence um if you want to actually do anything powerful and that feels a bit weak um when you can just play anarch and you can spend like 12 of your influence on just nonsense if you want and you've still got a perfectly good deck however New cards have meant that Kit, Kit has spare influence all of a sudden because you build this deck um, and, you know, it's a it's a a deck which I'm sure everyone's seen this kind of um, uh, this kind of sort of shell has been very much out. Um, you play this deck you build this deck and then i got to like 42 43 cards and was like i have nine influence left to spend like genuinely uh the bravados are here because they are one of the best like money cards which work really well with prepaid um and we're wanting to make a lot of runs so i just shoved in free bravados and and called it called it a day axe is asking uh, why am I playing Harmony AR Therapy when we have Levy back? Uh, the Harmony AR, AR Therapies are in here for one incredibly specific reason. They're not really... Like, this deck isn't going to get all the way... It's not going to get to the bottom and and reload and, and burn back through in almost any circumstance. But it does suffer massively to Rig Shooter. Um, like, I have two programs... They're both incredibly expensive. Um, if they go down, I don't have Simul Chip because Simul Chip just doesn't work with this deck. So the Harmony AR therapies are mainly there to get back the programs. Now, there's a chance that these should be um, like either Compile or they should be Test Runs. And I can't work out what's the best option here because both of those cards actually have real issues when you trying to combine it with spark of inspiration which is obviously like how we're hoping to get our stuff out because if you put in compile then the the break of it you're probably going to pull with compile when you're sort of doing your if you want to use it as an early like i'm going to charge your remote and i'm just going to find my uh lobisomen the card that you're going to pull is the Lobosome, which then means that it goes to the bottom of your deck. It's a really bad place for it to be because you want the first thing that you spark out to be the Lobosome, not the Orca. So Compile's a bit weird. It's better 
it's it's probably better as well i don't even know if it is actually whether it's better as a as a like i've just had my breaker lost and i'll get it back unless you've got a spark of inspiration in hand then it's still no good there because then you're still going to have to draw all of your deck test run is more interesting and it's probably the better idea because firstly you can use it to just find your stuff like when you need it um and secondly when you can use it to get stuff back out of your bin if it's been trashed and then it'll be at the top of your deck so you can draw it and reinstall it if you want but one issue with that is if if you have to use it early on to go and get your lob summon and you don't have a spark of inspiration in hand then you're then going to have to draw your lob summon like there's no way of you not of, of you getting like a spark first um so maybe the idea, but maybe the better idea is to play like two test runs and an extra rigging up, so that you've kind of got that as an option, and you can just always rig up the lobby somewhere. Axu asks, "You could also just play two of both breakers." I don't think so. I am particularly not two of both. Like, it's a really, really bad idea. Um, this deck has no way to beat centuries which are past the outside ice it's not like in golo decks and so i really don't like a lot of people augustus has been telling me to to maybe try playing like two lobby summons so it's more likely that i spark out a lobby summon first because that is a much better option and one orca i don't like it uh dave this is pretty much exactly the deck which um which i played against you last week yeah um you see, I don't like two lobby lobby, uh, sad stug. Um, but I do have an idea for something that I might like a bit better. Because I, once you've got your lobby somme, if you then spark of inspiration and get a second lobby somme, it is useless. It does nothing apart from technically having one extra counter if you like need it for a barrier. Um, but I was talking the other day and. I did consider maybe we play one Lobber Summon, we play one Orca, and we play one Ingolo. And then the Ingolo is never useless, right? If it's the first thing you draw, then you just have to use it as your breaker for, you know, you if it's the first thing that you spark, you just have to use it as your breaker. It's not ideal. It's very expensive. You really want to be charging up your Lobber Summon. Um, but I don't. But then at least, like, if you get down an Ingolo and a Lobosome, then you can always break a, a Sentry as well. So actually, pretty good. Definitely a worthwhile option. But then you will have to trash your Ingolo when you find your Orca, when you spark out your next thing, because we're playing 2MU, two 2MU. Uh, two MU, two MU. And, oh, and for the most time... I was playing no console here. I have now put in one Anicam. I don't actually think, think free Anicam is correct. Um, because the other two are completely dead cards. And we don't use the MU for anything. But. Kakis Lab. Has. Has hit on what I might be considering is the better option. Which is to play. Two Lobosome. And one Inversificator. Okay. So firstly. This entire rig we can have up if we have an Anicam down. So, like, we don't... If if we find our Anicam, and maybe we play a second Anicam because of this, if we find an, our Anicam, then we don't have to trash anything. This also gives us, like, an additional program that's out, which we can trash to SDS, which is a huge problem for this deck. Um, if you've tried playing this Breaker Suite of these two into SDS, very, very painful. Um, yeah, fix just the harmony is like the way you play against SDS, and um, and Alpi beat me very nicely the other day when he just did store and double advanced an SDS, which I knew was an SDS, and I had just had to go and steal it. And I the only c breaker I had down at that point was a Lobosomin, and then he just like six advanced a City Works, pro no, a, a um, clearing house behind a ice wall or something you know something absolutely like i just couldn't get through and because i had to draw all my stuff so this breaker suite is a bit more interesting because firstly 
If we spark out an investigator, we're not that sad. We can still get through to ice servers, which is really, really nice. And in the late game, the investigator is potentially like the more the ruder card than Ingolo. Ingolo is like this safer card, which is like, yeah, we can we can like definitely get through. But in Versificator, we can start moving their shit around, um, which becomes really, really powerful when they're trying to put like border controls on HQ to stop burner runs and things like that. So I think we're gonna try and play try and play like this. Um which means I need to cut a card, and it's probably one cataloger. Um, let's talk about the other cards in the deck. Um, Bravado, as I said, it's just great money. Um, and we've got nine influence to screw about with, so that seems great. Burner is an incredible card. I said it when it like came out. I was really looking forward to playing it. Um, we talked about it as being an S-tier card in the tier video. I've not changed my mind on this. Free burner, easy. Creator's great, Diesel's great, Dirty Laundry is money, it's okay with prepaid voice pad, uh, it's a good thing to get back. Harmony AR therapy is pretty bad, but it gives the deck a bit of longevity, it gives us something to do if we lose our Lobosome, maybe these should be test runs and just be like okay like that. I'll consider cutting them. They've been okay. There's been some games where I've been like actually getting like five econ cards back has been like decent. And if we run into something like PE or stuff like that, then we're okay. Into the Depths is really good. Um, unfortunately, we we well there has been there has been times when I've used this to summon like the other breaker which I need, which is an incredibly expensive way to do it. But it does work in a pinch. Um, and sometimes you just need something to work in a pinch. I had an absolutely incredible game earlier against uh, Dav. Is it? I think, like, I'd call him Dave, but it's not Dave. Um, I saved the. Um, this game right here, Day or Dav's 1 3 1. I might do uh, like a replay. I've saved the replay. I might do a replay review of this because this was such an intense game. Um, and that included me having to uh, into the depths out my Lobosome. Pretty much brutal. Um, Overclock is really good. This card was Trickshot. Trickshot is an okay card. But it's non-synergistic with the best win con um, in our deck. And um, and I always wanted it to be an overclock. I played like five, six, maybe seven games with Trickshot. I really wanted to just to give it a go, just to be sure. Overclock is better in almost every single situation I wanted to play it. Um, rigging up is cute. We can get down on Anikam for free. We can get down these for free. Spark is obviously the way we get our breakers out, Gamble. And then Cataloger. This is a card which I kind of shot down a little bit. I didn't think this was as good as indexing. I now think it might be better than indexing in this particular deck where we can almost always charge it up. We've got Orca, we've got um, Into the Depths. We can normally keep one of these just going. We can rigging one up if, if we haven't needed to sort of install our breakers from hand um this card's nuts it's so good this is the only win con this deck needs when i first built this i had like a twinning in here because i was like oh i can charge the twinning i could see like multiple cards i had um leg works i had all sorts you don't need any of that you have burner which deals with all of your hq pressure and you have cataloger which deals with all of your r d pressure and i genuinely have not needed anything else two prepaid is money um cactus Club is saying is the telework needed probably not i just like having just a little something i've not found that i need i was struggling for draw too much i've got like free diesel free nuka has felt just about okay um like instead of playing 
a second Anicam, I'd actually probably just rather play like a VR Cation if I really wanted more draw. And maybe there's some games where where we do just want that like ton of draw. Maybe even like um yeah, that's probably a bad idea. I was gonna say we could even play a joyride, but that's that's terrible because we the time when we need draw is when we need to set up. Um cast Nuka, one telework. I think originally this was two telework. I dropped a telework for something else. Um but yeah, I just like having like a little bit of additional like non event based econ. It could be anything else, this card. It's not great, but it's there. Um, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, so I played against Dave on um, uh, on Emergency Hedge. Uh, if you are not familiar, they, uh, Dave and uh, Jessica play... Um, uh, they stream as Emergency Hedge. Um really good fun streams i really enjoy listening to them because um i don't think you i don't want to say you argue a lot because that's not not true but i like to hear like you both have kind of often very different things which are going through your heads in terms of what you should be doing in that turn and i really like to hear like you're like well uh maybe i'll do this and just be like well no i'll do this and that's really interesting for me to like listen to like, well, why do you think we should do this? Why do you think we should do this? Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, go and watch it. Uh, fix. I ha um, I've technically got enough members for chairs for, but I do not want any programs which will basically, I don't want to play anything which will screw with the spark. Um, and that's like a really important thing. If you, have a spark in your opening hand and you're like sick i'm gonna probably get my like lower summon out for free credits and you spark anything which isn't your breaker preferably your code gate breaker then you're super sad so you you just don't um there is a, <laughs> there is a chance well no because then we'd probably need to play leech i was gonna say there is a chance that like you like you've got nine influence to screw about with you could probably put like three copies of the crew in here and it'd be like pretty pretty disgusting oh rob's rob's watching that's scary uh well if i told you that oh You'll just have to watch the stream, Rob. Good luck. Have fun, Cyber. Um, okay, let's put my camera in the correct place. Um, this is a pretty good opening hand. We're against the outfits. We've got a spark early, which is great. We've got a burner early. Like, it's whether we put down the Annie Cap. <laughs> like, really scary figures. I probably don't really want to draw much. I'm going to keep this. I, like, I shouldn't really be thinking about this too much. I'm definitely keeping this hand. It's, it's sick. Like, we could go Nuka, Spark... We'll see, if they don't protect HQ, we might just burn them. Okay, they protect HQ. Very sensible. Double protect HQ. That's scary. Um, okay, let's get a... Uh, Orca is, like, fine. We're going to run R&D. Hopefully they're not on um, under the bus. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm not going to install the Nuka anymore. That's hilarious. Uh... Hello, Rob. How you doing? So on, I couldn't tell you because like then my opponent would know what, what the deal is. Um, we're playing... Uh, Kitalogger, which is kit with Cataloger and Burner. Oh, well, there's all our sparks, so that's lovely. 
I haven't got much econ here, but I definitely need to play one of these before. Um, right, we're set up. Um, rig done. Um, kind of just need money now. Now we could whack the Nuka one more time. We're going to have to throw out a card then, though. I don't want to run on R&D because I don't want to trigger... Um, I don't want to trigger under the bus. Okay, we've got a bunch of bad pub, which is nice. Um... So, you know, credit, gamble... I think we do just set up a tiny bit more this turn. And then next turn we probably look to poke R&D. Either that or we run R&D here. <laughs> There's a chance they could Trojan horses if they do, but they have to pay a lot of money. I'm going to just... I'm going to make sure I've got enough. I want to have enough money. An important thing. So now we really want to find our cataloger, um, or one of our free catalogers. No, we're down to two, aren't we? What is this nonsense? Oh, this is Hollow Man. I see. That's quite scary, actually, because they do have ways of just, like, fast advancing in SDS, which is freaking terrifying. Uh, do we put the Anicam down is the question. Yeah, YOLO man, warning. We got too bad pub. If we put this down, server free could be SDS. Um, so what we could do is we can go Anicam. So if this is SDS, then we actually... Oh, oh, we have to be able to steal SDSs. So we actually need to play our Spark to get our Inversificator down as well. Uh, Hollow Man is, is nutty good. If I play this and play this, I'll still have... I'll still have enough, I think. Like, this can't be anything which we can't deal with pretty easily, I don't think. Yeah, Hollow, Hollow Man has proven to be, like, probably the best card of, of the Corpse set. But, like, quite a long way. What is going on here? Are we going to get Andrew leaked? One arrest? Rob, did you underrate Hollow Man? How did... All oh, right, got ya. I think we're going to get Angelique, which is actually a problem. Yeah. What's this one? Wow. Oh, that's a real shame. Okay. Do I have a window to jack here? Because they have to res it. When do they have to res it? Yeah, I think I'm going to hit a snare. Thing is, I kind of want, I might want that spark. <laughs> Uh, yeah, fine. Right. There's the underbus. We'll see him a virus, take a net. Uh, we will trash that. We kept a burner, which is nice. There's a chance I want to go and check this, but there's also a chance that this is an Angelique. Don't know if we're still on Hollow Man anymore. 
So let's just draw catalog. It is sick. That's coming down next turn. I'm going to draw again just so that I don't like lose. The annoying thing is if this is... Okay, they're just charging up the bad pub. That's fine. We kind of should run this first because it could be a spin doctor. But there's also like a really good chance that it's just an Angelique. So let's see if... Uh, do we burn of them first, then go in with the cataloger? I think we go cataloger first. Okay. I don't care too much about them having the Valentau. They're already at four bad pub. I don't really want them to draw this Rashida. I might go back and trash the Rashida. I think I'm going to keep these in exactly the same order. I guess, like, it's better for them to draw the too big to fails. So, the, yeah. Um, but I might want to go back and trash this. So we'll do that. Uh, action. Sick. Okay. We found a spin doctor. Uh, we'll run and trash the spin doctor. Or let them shuffle. And then we might go and just check the top. Or we burn of them because they might be on big deal. Nah, the Angelique decks aren't on, on big deal, right? They didn't shuffle, so they're going to draw into two too big to fails. I don't want to burn a here. I want to burn a next turn. Okay, uh, Nuka's like pretty good because we're assuming that they might have like city works. That's probably fine. We get to spark we get to burn them first click. Which is excellent, even if this is a border control. Uh we just burn them again. Okay. What do we not want them to have? Don't care about this under the bus. As much as well, we kind of do want to install this nuka. Punitive are they gonna be able to punitive us? I think the Angelique is like the most annoying card here. So I think I'm going to put that on the bottom. I might just put the... Punitive on the top to slow them down. We can install the Nuka, click the Nuka. Then run HQ, just in case we get a run event. We don't, we'll run HQ. We see another of us. Okay, who's got a notepad out and can remember what uh, what their hand looks like? Because I can't. We'd really like them now <laughs> to res a sentry. Because then we can start charging our cataloger. So the other thing that we're going to look for is we're going to look for an into the depths. Um, or just a second cataloger. Let's... I guess, do we hit the Nuka? We're going to play an event anyway, right? Well, that's a rubbish hand to draw. Are we going to need more money? There's an Into the Depths. So we could Into the Depths R&D, use the cataloger. 
they've drawn enough, right? Uh, or we burn her now. They didn't res last time. Kind of assume they're not going to res this time. Um, Valentau, I don't care about them having. I think I want to slow them down, so I'm going to put the Valentau. Probably, I'm probably just going to put these two on the top and under the bus on the top of R and D. And then we might run back to try and snipe this Nuka. I guess we go back with the Into the Depths. Uh, so we can charge. Uh, we'll charge this card here. We find Rashida and trash it. That's perfect. Um, Daily Cast is probably the worst card in our hand. I actually want these harmonies because um, there is a chance that we're now going to draw enough to um, to kind of get some of our some of our nasty stuff back. Right, let's hit one of these so we can find a bravado. We do. I wonder if we ever play a prepaid voice pad. I don't think we do. The way he has to draw past what we're what we're what we're putting back, I guess, Rob. Um We probably don't play the prepaid, right? It's a very small chance that we actually do, just so that we don't run out of money. I think that was actually really dumb because I forgot that we have four bad pub. We're never going to run out of money. Oh, this is perfect. Um, thank you very much. I will. Catalogger. Uh, we can steal the city works and not die. So that's fine. I think the data loop is annoying. Um... I would love you to install another trebuchet, so I actually want you to install a trebuchet. So we'll do that. Done. Uh, we can go back. Is it better to go back or click the catalog? It's actually better to go back. That's hilarious. Because uh, cause this is free. Like, they might just... Uh, we don't even have money to spite punitive us. That's quite funny. Uh, we definitely don't need a second prepaid. That can go. I uh, would love to find DJ Fenris right now. Uh, are, they, are, are they holding on to an under the bus ready for DJ Fenris? I think they are. Okay. Who can remember cards? Because I can't remember cards. Uh, we There was a trebuchet. And a magnet on the top. And then a data loop. A data loop being actually quite annoying. Um, we just go back. We're going to get to charge this every time we run here, which is absolutely hilarious. Uh, what do we actually need to... Oh, this is so cheap. Let's break game two. I guess we break both of these. That's absolutely fine. Breaking a trebuchet for four credits feels so wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's going to start getting a little expensive here. Luckily, we've got money in hand. I'm like pretty unsure how they come back from this. So we cataloger. Um, we probably don't run back for this 
hostile will just nip it off the top. Um, data loop can go at the bottom. They can definitely draw this from a virus. Uh, the trebuchet. This, this. Hostile takeover on the top. Done. Hit this. And then... I think we just play a creative. Don't need two of those. Okay, well the two big to fails are good now, but we get very cheap runs on um on HQ. Um Did they draw one? They drew one. Haven't found DJ Steve yet. Do we want to do... I, I'm going to draw one. Okay, that's fine for next turn. Um... We can run HQ and then we can install the daily casts. Or we probably actually harmony here. Last click. I want to save one harmony for getting back the DJ Steve, which they might well trash. Okay, that's rude. Um, what do we want on the top of our deck? Probably the two harmonies. Kind of don't want to lose them. Oh, but I was going to play one. I think this ice positioning is just putting out the ice which they have. We see the magnet. Okay, that's fine. Um, we'll just play our casts. I think keeping the harmonies was a much better play there because I should have harmonies back. Um, like the burners and the other cataloger. Now they've drawn enough for us to make a really good cataloger run. Have we got a bravado left? No. Have we got an into the depths left? No. Uh, so we'll do this first. Oh, we've got an overclock. That'll do. Seems like a disgustingly cheap way of getting in. I don't even know if we're going to use these credits. Uh, I'm going to completely break this. Because I forgot that if I don't do that, I don't get the counter. I don't think it's relevant, but it could become relevant. <clears throat> uh, we'll charge a cataloger. Like, just look at this. Look at this cataloger. It's insane. This is indexing, but every single time I run R&D and I don't have to go back. There we go. That is the game. Uh, we'll put the above the law, reg, city works. Oh, we have to run back one more time because we haven't got enough clicks. So unless this is exactly border control. Not that, like, running back is an issue. Oh, we actually, did we just put Cityworks on the top? Yeah. Um, I, We just win here. Uh, I forgot, but we did that breach. Still hit that. Still. GG. Absolutely smashed it. Um, yeah, I, I forgot that that would... Yeah. That was a real lockout. No clot needed. <laughs> that is true. I drew well.
Uh, I mean, that felt great, didn't it? Double Spark is kind of blowout. Yeah. Um, there are games where it doesn't happen like that, but the ones where it does, you're just done. Like, um, I mean, I just love this tiny, like this really small rig. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the game. Um, like this, you know, we didn't need this prepaid voice pad. We obviously didn't need this daily cast. Our actual rig here is just an Orca, a Lobsome, an Anacam, and then the, the Cataloger. And we can kind of, that's it. It's it's so the opposite of, like, the whole, oh, Shaper just installs stuff and doesn't do anything all game. Um, and I just love it. Uh, no, come on. You bring it on, Rob. Absolutely bring it on. Um, I'll I'll load this now if you're ready. I'm scared because Rob uh, Rob is known to um to do quite well against me, and he's probably going to just be playing free Chrisiums to really piss me off. But we'll find out. Uh, I know he's been grinding some Nuvem, so. Yeah, that's cool. I haven't really played against Nuvem yet. Uh, we've got an opening spark. That seems decent. Like, not the greatest hand. The two overclocks are really awkward. Also, I've been playing against lots of Nuvem decks. This is six... 59 cards. Um, two overclocks are a bit awkward. And I've been playing against some Newman decks, which actually get close to locking this kit out. I'm going to keep this because having a spark and none of the breakers in hand is good. Uh, we're going to need to money up a bit, which is OK. We're already losing the money war by quite a bit. Okay, burner respect. Gotta love it. Uh, so I don't really want to draw. So let's go R and D. See an SDS off the top, but we can't steal hedge fund. That's a shame. We're gonna run. No, we're not gonna run archives, are we? We're just gonna click this, click this, hit this. I'll put my quarter up for a match against my Thunderbolt Arms deck. Uh, I haven't really. I think I played like one game against Thunderbolt, so I'd I'd be really interested in that if you uh if you wanted to play that after this one, Dave. Um, definitely not shy of that. Okay, he's pulling it back. Interesting. One card in hand. Did he play the hedge fund that we know he drew? Yes. Okay, let's see if we can high roll here. Hit a lob of something. Yes. That'll do. Okay, we can go server one and then we can draw two cards and we probably don't die to punitive. It's a descent. Uh, we'll trash that. That's a great use of our money, which is nice. We might check server two. The only risk with checking server two is if it's not just a spin doctor. So I'm going to draw. Uh, we'll put this down. I guess we should deal with that if it is a spin doctor because well I was going to say it's probably on spark oh what's going on here okay there are SDS's that's a problem there's basalt spires that's a good card okay spin doctor as expected kind of really want our Annie cam in this matchup uh, to deal with the punitive threat. Let's draw. 
Burn is good, but not right now. Let's draw. We could probably break whatever this is, and then we can recover. I'm sorry, but what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is like a pet card of mine but uh, this can't be your pet card it's my pet card um is this just going to be like an okay we see a Rashida and we'll just keep our money up a little bit Lucky Hush is in the game. Unlucky that I'm obviously not on it. There is actually a chance that this deck should be on a single um, air blades. Because obviously we can't play Hush because Spark, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it can play air blades and you can charge air blades very, like, really quite easily. Um, so I think an air blades is actually. Oh, sick. Uh, a real a really worthwhile um, shout for here okay we see a YOLO man subliminal messaging has to go in the bin because uh, it's a really good card we're never going to not run I don't think we just have to go back and trash this hollow man uh, I don't really want him to have the Akhet that becomes really annoying So I think I'll go and deal with the Hollow Man now. Um, let him draw the Colossus. Don't care about Colossus too much, I don't think. Although I'll tell you what, Colossus plus um, plus Oduduwa can get out of control very quickly. Yeah, and you see, we kind of should, but also can't really run through this. But I think we should. Okay, let's draw. That's like, that's pretty good. I don't think there's much value in burnering here. So I think we just go and get rid of this regolith using this overclock. Let's draw once more in case we find a prepaid we didn't find a prepaid okay don't like the f oh I forget how good Oduduwa starts getting okay maybe we shouldn't have run this because uh, this is going to be a freaking log jam and actually um that becomes a problem. Or it's going to be like the world's biggest colossus by the time we have to deal with it. Like I've been playing, seeing lots of these Nuvum decks are playing lots of these advanceable ice. And they're actually very annoying to deal with. Like Logjam, turns out if you if you can dirtle a fair bit, logjam's pretty good. It's a, it's a good card. Uh, we can bravado. It's really annoying that this is a triple advance. We might actually. I'll tell you what. We might DJ for. We're probably not going to DJ for Steve here because I have a funny feeling that this is going to be something horrendous. So the question is, we're probably DJing for Ketzel. Although it doesn't, she doesn't deal with log jam well. She deals with tree line excellently though. Um, otherwise, we DJ for Los and we do that now, and then we run R and D. I think we probably just go R and D. 
Okay, that's fine. We can fully break that at the moment, which is good. Uh, are we going to catalog it here? Yeah, we will. Okay, what have we got? Secure and protect, actually kind of scary right now. Government subsidy he can nearly pay for. Don't want to have him to have that money. I don't want him to have this arquette. I, I, mm, I almost prefer him to have border control. Oh yeah, this, we're going to need to burn her through whatever this is. I wonder if the arquette's more annoying than the border control. I'm just going to let him have the secure and protect. Because then if he shuffles all of these, then I'm actually alright with that. Um... Okay, DJ Ketzel deals really well with Aket, like, because we're eventually only going to be able to break one of these anyway, so we're probably going to DJ Ketzel this this game. We could diesel. I'm going to just set this up for next time. Got to level the three point six. Okay, this is perfect. So he's played the Secure and Protect, which firstly means that he trashed um, the Gov Sub. He's got a tributary monster. Uh, Axu will not believe that DJ Ketzel is correct, but um, he's wrong. Um, let's do this. Okay, so here we can either burn our HQ. And find out what this is. Or we bravado HQ for the more money issue. Thing is, this is not a very good burner target right now. It's pretty bad, in fact. And I should have clicked the diesel, not the nuka. I'm drawing more cards than I want to. Uh, do we know what's in HQ? We don't, but it doesn't seem to be anything that you can jam. We know what's there. We don't want him to res this tributary yet. Like, ideally. Uh, but I also don't want him to get back a subliminal messaging. So. It's all quite awkward. Unless we just let him res this sodding tributary. Uh, I think we want to challenge this HQ first. Let's see what he's got. If he doesn't resin, it's probably a Feroth, which is actually quite good for us. If he does res, apparently it's a Feroth too. Um, we just take a tag here, right? Clear a tag. Probably install this cataloger, as, although I'd really like to rig this one up. We could already hit a harmony. I don't hate hitting a harmony here because we're really going to need money because this is going to be like a bit of a slog. So if we harmony, we can get back. The telework is actually pretty good. A bravado, the cataloger, an overclock. It's like not the worst. Unfortunately, DJ Ketzel through this is not perfect. So I think we like burners might be kind of out of the game here. It's very expensive to break this sort of thing. Hmm. Very expensive to break it. So I think we want to get back at our other castle logger. Because I feel like this is where we're gonna this is where we're going to win the game, if anywhere. Right, Bravado, Cataloger, um it's probably the telework, maybe the casts. I think definitely the overclock. Could be the spark, but we've seen like no sentry so far apart from the Colossus, which he hasn't played. 
So I think it's the casts and the telework. If he wants to grind us out, then we're gonna grind out. Yeah, so DJ Quetzal could have saved clear an attack, which would be a thing. This is annoying because now we've got to run. Well, we don't. This is obviously an NGO, right? Um, okay, let's find. Okay, we found a spark. That's cool. Hold up. If we can get down. Ah, oh, okay. So we've got Inversificator in this version. Hey, Izzy. How you doing? Um, so actually, we can start being very annoying with Inversificator. I really want to get rid of this Adudua. But I don't know where I put it. Like, I guess maybe we can move the Aket onto HQ and then we can have a, like, burner target. Um... Either that or we catalog it here. That means that he gets to res the tributary. Is that bad? It's slightly awkward. It's slightly annoying. Hmm. Yeah, I do do on archives. That means I have to get him to res this archives ice, which is like a bit of a bugger. Kind of tricky to do. No point in burnering here. We could just like set up. I think we probably just have to set up and then draw into what I can only assume will be more econ next turn. Uh, we get an orca, which is we actually want. Um... Oh no, I didn't run! I didn't run and he's got subliminal! <laughs> oh, balls. Okay, I forgot about the subliminal. I forgot about it. Well, I, he had an NGO friend anyway, he's gonna have money. Uh, that looks problematic, because that's a hollow man into something. <sighs> Which means I've probably got to go and check the sodding thing. Oh, well, that's awful. That is not good at all. I needed, like, an overclock. I needed a way of making this run and it being not a disaster. Because this costs four... And then Hollow Man is two to trash, which is like a lot of money. So I might just have to hope that it's not an SDS. Well, it's, it's just as bad if it's a Basalt Spire, right? Because then he just gets back to Hollow Man. Hmm. Oh, that was such a bad, like, draw. Could put down the cataloger and go. Then he gets to res the tributary. I can't believe I drew no event econ there. Wow. I really hate that I'm letting you get this one I've got a let tributary get rest yeah but like to break it like it's actually a bit of a pain like if I run R&D I might as well have been running server free oops I think this is probably me making a mistake here but um there we go. Okay, it was Rashida. We're okay. We're okay. Next turn we can draw one. I let him get another subliminal messaging though, didn't I? It's pretty bad. Pretty bad show.
probably actually just drawing and throwing out the burners is like correct here, right? Played enough mailing lists to know that if you want to draw an event and you have 10, 9, 10 charts, you won't. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, Axu. I probably am. Like, I'm, I'm, I've balanced my laptop on my lap and balance is like precarious today because I was very much late to the, to the game. This is going to be a uh, border control. And we're going to have to run through this Adudua twice because I did not put pinholes in. Right. Draw something good, please. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so we overclock here, and then we see what happens. Such professional streaming setup. You wouldn't even believe it. Um, let's click this first. We'll play the overclock. Couldn't have drawn you last turn, could we? Action. I, I know there's it's no, but there are times when you should be instantly popping this border control. So now we wouldn't even be able to swap this arquette, assuming he puts the counters on it. Either that or we're going to find out where this Colossus is. It is there. That's fine. Can we get back in? Yes. Can we get back in and trash the Hollow Man? Just. Can we get back in, trash the Hollow Man, lose one of our breakers to an SDS? Absolutely. Where are you putting the counters now, Rob? Over here. Now it gets four. Oh, it's a freaking Managa. Oh, that feels bad. Oh, that felt bad. That was a lot of money. And we didn't get very far with it. Right. DJ Ketzel is now 100% to play. Unless anyone's got any better ideas. We're definitely not running through this Pharos a lot. Unless we can switch it. If we can switch this with um, Inversificator. But we also need to find an Anicam and an Inversificator before we can do that. Well, we just have to run this first clip, right? Or we take... Uh, we take three first. Is there any chance we draw into... No. Like, into the depths would probably be the best thing we could draw right now. But I think we just have to take three, run this, spend two clicks, probably lose an orca. Give Rob all of the Oduduar value. Fine, we'll get rid of your skunk works while we're there. We died to punitive now? Probably not. Great, we get a little bit more time set up. Right, let's draw an econ card. That is okay. I'm going to draw again. I am going to throw out these two burners, or maybe one of the burners. We'll click this, we'll put down this, we will toss a burner. Um, yeah, I do do art is a, is a strong card. I also forgot to run, not that there's any way I really want to run. This card now feels like a Colossus, right? Priorac, disgusting. Um, gets a Nuvum trigger, probably puts an Akat or a Pharos with three three counters on it straight here. 
Okay. Could also be a tree line. DJ Ketzel's looking better and better. R&D is still quite weak. If we can draw into something which gives us good enough value. Okay. The Into the Depths is exactly what I was looking for. Now, if we play the Anakam, we'll draw a card. I don't think I want to. Hey, Weeble. Uh, yeah, this is this is a true nightmare, but that's fine because uh, I did invite Rob to play, or he said, do you want me to play a game against you? And I said yes, because I'm an idiot. I think the turn is just play these two cards and take a credit. One, two, three, four, five, six, and throw out another burner. And then next turn... Like, I don't think I want to install the Anakam because I don't actually think I want to draw an extra card. Next turn, it's like Cataloga, go R&D. <clears throat> Maybe win. We could play the Anakam now so that we draw a card next turn. It's like a really dumb ordering, right? Is this worth it? We're going to get some free card draw. One free card draw a turn. It might be worth it just for the punitive matchup. Maybe that was awful. Um, but next turn we go Cataloger, install DJ Fenris. We um, into the depths R&D. We know exactly what this ice on the outside of R&D is. It's a tributary. There's going to be something else there now. That oh, you bastard Rob. Colossus. Okay, at least it's on the outside. We have just lost our orca. That's problematic. Uh, we're gonna need to use this Harmony AR therapy to get the orca back. So we don't get locked out. Okay. Card here. Um DJ Cat's always going to save us money every single turn, right? If we're running an Akat, it costs us one, two. I guess it only costs us three. Uh, it costs us two. No compile in this one, dear Jenny. I talked about it at the start. There's a chance that test run is correct. Compile's tricky because it puts the thing to the bottom of your deck, which makes it puts it in the worst place to spark. Um, but there's a, a version of this deck which plays compile and wizard's chest which i might try after this because it definitely looks fun um so it's whether we do dj fenris this turn or not ah oh, so next turn rob's going to be able to put the tributary on the outside so essentially we might need to kind of win this turn <laughs> that's awkward isn't it um so I think it's not DJ DJ Ketzel this turn. I think it's just Cataloger into the depths. Maybe we see two agendas and then we can steal both and win. If they're two SDSs, we actually can't. Quite funny. We might have to install something from our deck. Do we want to get... Mm, no, we, we kind of don't. But we might... We actually have to install something from our deck. And we do have a target. So we're going to have to install... Well, maybe we can maybe we can make it awkward anyway with that. Fine. Okay, Cataloger. Smash R&D. Uh, this is a code gate. This is a tributary. Uh, yeah. This we break for free credits. Uh, you see, we should have just installed the DJ Ketzel. Uh, end the run. Let the other subs fire. But then we couldn't have won if we see two here. We need to see two here. Okay, so. Game four. Charge this 
Install a program, we have to install an inversificator. Cataloger. Well, that's crap. Do we want him to draw the punitives? I think so, right? I don't think we lose via punitive. I think we lose. I think there's an agenda in the bin. I haven't considered that fact. I definitely don't want him to have this Aket and the priory construction. We're going to put the Aket at the bottom. I think the punitives are the worst cards right now. So we put them there. Okay, we've got a spark. So we can get our Orca back next turn. We're pretty short on money. Thinking. Uh, so I'm gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna click to draw one. I hadn't realised hard SCS. Hard SCS is. SDS is such a hard counter to this deck, Taniki. Um I thought I did have to, Izzy, if I, if there is a legal target in there. I've been told that in the past, but um, if it turns out I'm wrong, then that's great. That's perfect. We're actually going to play this now, because then next turn we're going to we're going to get our value anyway. So next turn we're going to hit Harmony AR Therapy, get our Orca back into the deck, and we're going to spark it. This hopefully isn't an SDS which gets audacity out. I guess if it gets audacity out now, then that's the best possible time. Awkward. Uh, we know he's got punitives in hand. Do we force him to res this? Ah, oh, you can always fail to find. Didn't know that. In which case, that's what I should have done. Um, if we draw with Nuka, we could draw into a Bravado, actually. We're quite likely to draw into a Bravado. We want more overclocks right now, is what we really want. We're not going to draw an overclock. We do draw a Bravado, though. Do we have enough money to get through whatever this is if we bravado? No, because they're going to move a tributary. I forgot about the sodding, sodding tributary. <laughs> In which case, that was like the, a bad play. Because now we can spark back. This is our last Harmony AR therapy. So basically, I can't really... can't really challenge until I've got my other Orca out. It's really awkward. Do I want... Do I care where this tributary is? Does it make a difference? Not really. So I think I just charge the server. He moves. We lose our kit ability. A break the draw sub Jebra Lassie the thing is I don't can't... well me actually okay so maybe in this very specific deck in my opinion gotcha oh yeah I forgot we had um, Inversificator maybe we can do some nonsense with Inversificator here we can do some nonsense with Versificator here. Okay, okay. I'm starting to I'm starting to think that installing the Versificator was correct. Here Can we afford to get through this? Not quite. We'd have to break it. Sure. Amazing. We found we have found the tributary the anti tributary tech. Um Yeah, 
that seems gross. Uh, I probably should have put uh, the old DJ down. Uh, I think this just fires. We clear a tag. It's better than doing anything. Do we move it? No. Because the leather. <laughs> uh, that can just fire. Oh, he drew a card. Didn't really want to draw a card, but that's fine. We'll remove a tag. We'll put down this. We'll throw out a burner. This is actually okay. We're actually okay. This is why we saved the Harmony AR. So this turn, we're going to Harmony AR. We're going to get back both of our breakers, unsurprisingly, Lobosome, Orca. Then, what other cards do we want? We definitely want an Overclock. I think we want the Into the Depths. Seems like one of the best cards we've got here. Uh, probably just the Gamble, actually, right? Gamble. And then it's either... I think bravado is now really tricky, although like we get a lot of value back from here. It might be another spark. We've got one in hand. Spark is a five or a seven credit econ card. Is that? But it's it's like slightly unreliable. End of depth seems mm, risky, actually. Take laundry doesn't feel good. It might just be creative. Okay. Spark. Nice. SDS, Rob. Um... We can run archives here, right? I think it's worth it. It will cost us free credits. I don't know what this is. We might let this fire this time. Uh, it feels really bad, actually. We'll break it for free credits so that we get a counter oh this could just be an ice wall oh my oh no we don't win because the battle spire is really good for a second i got really excited until i remembered so you if there's two battle spires in archives uh you steal one and they get to recur a card. And obviously it's the other Basalt Spire. Pretty gross. Is there any chance that they punitive us? I don't care about losing these three cards. So I'm just going to hit this button. Okay. Now we want a legwork. Give me a legwork. Okay. Do we have enough money to burn her? And if we burn her, oh, it's flipping tributary though. If we burn her, do we ever? We might run the tributary and swap it onto HQ. That's not bad, right? We can we can start abusing this tributary. Oh, this is quite exciting. This is suddenly a very... This is fun. This is the worst card in their deck all of a sudden. As long as we've got enough money to do this. Let's get like a little bit of money. None of that is money that we can use. So we run here, it costs us three credits. No, how much does it actually cost us? It costs us four, right? One, two, three, four. Then we run HQ... Do we ever let it fire? Well, on HQ, we can break it with Lobosome. So it costs us eight credits, and it will cost us seven credits once it's here. 
which is exactly how many much we've got. So we'll need to click for one credit so that we can dirty laundry HQ. Then we could consider getting down DJ Steve all of a sudden. Oh, this is this is fun. This is fun. Yes, please. I'll swap it with this one, then I'll jack out. Thank you very much. I'll gain a credit. Hit the basalt spire. We got there. Oh, yes. Oh, the realization that tributary had suddenly become a massive weakness it was excellent. Okay, inversificator is the correct call for that other um for that other option. Um. I might not have needed to. I uh, a wild turtuck. I needed to fully break it because otherwise I can't move it with the inversificator. I didn't need to fully break it the second time. You are absolutely right. I could have saved a credit, um, which means I could have actually like run twice. Um, name that was grueling but fun. Um, uh, Dave, Dave C, are you? If you're still around and you wanted to play your Thunderbolt deck, then let me know in chat in the in the next short period of time. Uh, yes, wondered if I shouldn't have actually scored the SDS. Possibly not. I was holding on to the harmony just in case. Oh, was it you, David? Sorry, David, I I missed which David it was. But yes, uh, I will put up a game. Um, <laughs> I'm David B. Yeah, it what, was it. I I was reading uh, out of the corner of my eye earlier. A someone called David, and I thought it was David C, but maybe it was David B. Uh, said that they had a Thunderbolt deck that they wanted to play. Um, so if that was you, then absolutely. Uh, maybe you should have kept enough to keep Colossus alive for it. Yeah. Yeah, I figured that must be a Colossus. 13 strength is pretty gross. Um, yeah, maybe tree line. Where I had DJ Ketzel ready for that line. Whoa, Rob's not playing tree line. You're not playing tree line. Wild. Um, <laughs> right yeah you should <laughs> right uh let's jump into it right uh back to the game okay i've beaten rob on stream um i will now proceed to never play him on stream again and thus have a uh uh, thus have a um a perfect like i mean as long as you don't like go and look back at any of your any of the old streams i am yeah i was gonna say i'm like 99 percent sure that soundworks is david burrish so uh i'm glad i got that correct this is a sick opening hand this is ideal i'm keeping this all the way to the bank um me too. Um interested to see what you got cooking 
in thunder 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 bolt okay Well, that was fun. I had I had fun playing a real slog of a game. <laughs> um, but here we go. Right, Thunderbolt. Who's played against Thunderbolt? Who, what am What am I running into here? This is I'll tell you what. This is the one matchup where um, sparking out an Orca turn one. I don't mind sparking out an Orca turn one at all. But we're gonna go slow. Night, Rob. That was a good puzzle. That was a um, a real. I'm gonna do this. We're gonna run R and D because then we're gonna go like prepaid, creative. Are we steal a Stegodon? Are we gonna go back for another? We're not. We're playing against a Stegodon deck. That's scary. At least our ice, our our breakers boost very well. Scores a Stegodon. Okay. One for you. One for me. Right, click one. Okay, I don't mind this specifically against Thunderbolt because I feel like they're probably going to be playing more sentries than anything else. It's like, obviously, Lover So Mate has better options. I think I can check HQ here. Two credits? They haven't got anything. If they like res exactly a wave, it's a bit of a shame. I probably get rid of this because I don't want to know what they're doing with it. And then we'll draw again. Okay, nuke is good for next time. Um. Like the I. I have played one game against Thunderbolt and they were doing very, very mean stuff. Uh, t I think the only ice they read, they had like three Harkals. They had one on R&D, one on HQ, one on a remote. They had a what's-his-face, everyone's favourite, Byroid. Uh, can anyone rem remember his actual name? Well, I guess I'm just checking this. I don't think there's anything particularly bad that they can res. Are we trashing this? Hmm. It could be a lot of money. I think we trash it because I think we're ahead of them currently. Probably putting down the daily cast was better than running this now. Trieste, that's why it is. Yeah. So they just basically kept rezzing and de-rezzing her calls, rezzing and de-rezzing the Trieste so that you could never break the Hakal like with the clicks it was like it was kind of mean um i don't know whether i'd count it as being good but it was pretty mean okay we get down two daily casts or do we go casts telework nuka click telework i think we go casts telework nuka click don't have that many clicks How do I not have that many clicks? I kind of want to keep my money up a bit here. I probably should have challenged that. Again, like, they didn't res on three. Is there anything they res on four? Not really. Like, there's not any particularly nasty code gates now right outside of um the byroid one like which obviously is only nasty if you've got other stuff going on i mean you know like like super game losing type ones now, this is getting a little scary we're also probably just like they've got staggered on up so we possibly just want to channel like centrals right let's get okay spark is good um do we want to spark this turn i think we do so i think we go prepaid spark and then at least we've got inversificator we'll take it's not the ideal option right now but 
I do like the idea of moving around their ice because I kind of have a feeling that they might be on a load of ice which is very specific in terms of where they want it to be. Like, we've already seen a Brasilia grid, right? The only issue now is that we'll need to put down the Anicam before we can, like, get out a Lobosome. But that's fine. They're not going too fast here. Unless, yeah, I was going to say, unless they do something really nuts with this one. Greasing the palm. Protection HQ. Got to be careful of that burner. Look at this chunk. Chunk of ice. So we think this is possibly the Brasilia grid. Someone remind me what that does. Because uh, even when I was meant to be reviewing it, I couldn't remember what it did. Okay, let's find like a gamble would be ideal. They're not gambles. Uh, but we can put down the Anicam. We can then play the spark. Which is actually, unfortunately, the best play that we have here. Um, we drew a rigging up, which we only now want for cataloguers. I think we just click this. I think we want to keep... problem is here exactly what we throw out. I think it's one D. It's probably the diesel and the rigging up. No, we're throwing out the harmony. I'm like slightly worried about throwing out harmony in in a matchup where they might be on very nasty stuff um you can oh this is what the brasilia grid does do we keep rigging up just in case we draw a cataloger that feels awful so let's not do that you can de-res one of your eyes to make the one you're resing plus three strength once per turn Diagene saying Thunderbolt will be scary once Corp realises how fearsome Isaac Liberdade is in there. Isaac Liberdade is a really interesting card because he's weirdly not good in decks with advanceable ice. Like, have you tried playing him in BTL? Because I have, and he wasn't very good in it. Right, let's draw that. That's exactly what we want to use up some of the this. Serevna in Thunderbolt seems like pretty mean. I'm uh, probably my first Thunderbolt build is going to be um, next time we might double burner here. So I'm just going to get ready to to do that. Uh, I think mine's going to be like triple Starfka. Like when I do build. When I do build Thunderbolt. I like I like the idea of resing a Starfka, trashing a Marilyn, putting the Marilyn back in your deck. Then de resin the Stavka with some nonsense and doing that again and just like constantly using Marilyn's as like your kind of your trash ability. Um, I mean, I say I like that. I really like Rig Shooter <laughs> and I'm, I'm just sorry, all right? Like, can't help it. Now, is this a weird time to uh, to burn her because they, um, Gonna move this a tiny bit. Is that better? There we go. Feel like they've been digging for a long time. <clears throat> I feel like they maybe could have. <laughs> maybe we just overclock in and see what happens, right? How bad can it be? At the moment, they can't staggered on anything. The other thing would just be to hammer centrals like an absolute demon. I want to see what their deck does. So I'm going to click this and hit this. And then I think we have loads of money and we should be fine. Fimborig, we have Inversificator. Are we breaking with Inversificator so that we can move it? Who knows which way around this works? Uh, can you remember... Do you know how the Inversificator symbol Runner gets a move, then Cork gets a move. Okay. So I probably don't want to move this. Because they can just move it back. Like, it doesn't help us at all. So that's a bit of a shame. 
they've got the tech for our tech. I guess this is a really good thing if you're playing like Brasilia Grid and you want to move res dice onto onto the thing. Brasilia Grid just at the start of the run, something nonsense like that, right? You've got to have it like resed. Couldn't be totally sure. Okay, some movement has happened. What do we have now? We have Vovo. Didn't res that before the thimble rig, which is interesting. Maybe they just forgot. Uh, did you wanna res Vovo before the thimble? Or was that specifically not? Because you can just take 2C if so. Uh, uh, they didn't for a reason, so that's fine. Now, this we can move with Inversificator. Is that a good thing to do? Probably. It costs us the same to break it with Inversificator, so... I think we're going to do that. Um, do we move it in here? Do we put it on like HQ? I think we put it on HQ so that HQ is like really gash ice. And then we just start putting down DJ Steve and, and Burner. Yes. We'll put that there. Okay, I'm really liking <laughs> I'm really liking the inversificator. I know I only put it in as like this like weird tech card to deal with stuff, but um but very much it's very fun. Okay, this we break wow, it's so cheap. And we only have to break one sub because we don't have any programs. Um, oh no, we have to break another one. Uh, break the Thunderbolt sub two. Oh, there we go. We can ju just do it like that. No, oh. mess that up a little. But that should be right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're definitely getting rid of this Vovo because this is like all the money for the game that they need. Let's have a look at this. Trash that. Uh, we'll trash that. That's great. I think I just want to... Oh, I kind of want to take two credits could run R&D like next turn I really want to get full value so I want to go like Fenris burner probably burner again then run back to get run here or here so I don't think I want to burner quite yet we could burner once and then go and deal with HQ they get to move the thimble they'll get to move the thimble rig anyway it's very cheap for us to break through here. Let's go. We'll do one burner now. We'll use the other one next turn. Oh, nice. Uh, luckily, this boosts quite well. We could... Do we just give them a credit? They're so short on credits, but I'm kind of tempted not to. But we might just give them a credit, right? It's only one. It saves us three credits. I think that can fire. 
Tithe, Hagen, and Ikawa. We can't steal the Ikawa. I don't think I want him to have the Tithe. That seems like a really good card. Uh, I'm going to put both of these on the bottom. Obviously, we can't go back for the Ikawa here. The Hagen go on the bottom. I guess actually like the Ikawa going on the top of R&D is, is, is like potentially a better option. Um, and we just like take a credit. Next turn they either like install double advance the Ikawa. Fine. Or we're going to Fenris Burner HQ. The Thimble Rig is annoying. It really screws up the whole, I'm going to, like, maybe the, no, they can always move it back. Right, do we think this is the Ikawa? We'll find out. Uh, Fenris or Steve? Burner. No Stegodonk. Oh, there is Stegodonk. Ooh, look at that. Six strength. So it's either seven or it's six. So we're going to break it with this. Because it's always better. Because we get the, the value either way. Let's see if they res. Oh, they do res. I think now we break it it's actually quite expensive luckily we can into the depths r d so that seems all right uh yes please our two two cards in the heap um what do we want we want two creatives i think ideally because then we can into the depths no because we'll steal the ikawa with our like last click Oh, they res the wave so that it, it like, gunks up R&D a little bit. That actually makes a lot of sense. Hmm. There's a chance that if we... I actually might take the creatives. I think next time we're going to have to take a turn off, but it's not like they're doing any... Oh, hello. Can we steal both of these in any way? Do we? What do we want to steal? Do we want to steal? Just go and steal the off world and let them draw into the Ikawa? We put the tithe at the bottom. Put the off world on the top. Just let them keep. Like the Ikawa's not going anywhere, is it? Tithe to bomber R and D. Off world office on the top of R and D. And then we'll. Into the depths, into R and D. They can't still stick it on, right? They've already done the stick it on. This is once a turn. This is once a turn, right? Each run. James, you idiot. Well, I really thought that was once a turn. Each run, as long as a piece of ice has been decreased. Whenever a run begins, you may de-res. Stegodon is... Oh, but this procs itself. Gotcha. Shit. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, that fires. Because I can't break it. I have no way of breaking it. I'm a credit short because we into the depths. Wow. Uh, that might be a concession. That might have to be a concession. I've already thrown away one of our harmonies, right? I can't break.
I'd be interested if they they might actually be considering whether they trash the inversificator as well. Yeah, I think that's probably correct. Um, oh, and I have to do, and I have to trash a card. Well, we're gonna trash. Um, <clears throat> what's worth more here? One prepaid or this daily casts? <coughs> this gets us four credits. I think it's probably the cast right now. Well, that was unfortunate. Uh, we have nothing to charge. Shame. Okay. Well, now we just basically have to find our other Harmony AR therapy or we just lose. Luckily, we know that we can get into HQ. Like, there is a chance that actually just running through this bloop I think maybe oh no it was last click I couldn't have okay right we need to find our one harm our one remaining harmony before they do too much more nonsense um luckily we made them poor We can't really... We can still actually challenge Ice. We do still have a Code Gate Breaker. Which is kind of interesting. We know... We know what the HQ Ice is. And they probably don't want to de-res these bloops. I wouldn't have thought. So if we go cataloger, the other option is to run the maybe the HQ bloop, move it onto R and D, and then tunnel HQ for a bit. We know this inside ice is a wave. Do we know what the inside ice on R and D is? Don't know if we do. Or we move this bloop. And there and we cataloger. So what's this to break? Let's assume they do derez this bloop. This will be at zero strength, so we need to boost to five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It'll cost us eight. It will cost us exactly the amount of money, which if we do catalog or run R and D. Catalog or run R and D is an option. Assuming that they do de res this bloop. I think that that's okay. I don't know if there's like some Thunderbolt shenanigans which I'm missing here, we'll find out. Go on. D res your only res bloop. Or your only other res bloop. Oh, we do! That also means they get one extra credit, which is a problem because it means that they can possibly res this ice. Spin Doctor first is correct. Thank you, Gerald. Gerard. Um. I should have run the spin dogs first. This is a tithe. This is slightly annoying. Uh, that's obviously going to fire. It's going to get them a credit. We're going to trash this daily casts. Um, uh, we kind of want it. Well, that was fine. We'll trash this. Definitely should have run the spin dogs first. But here we can probably get them to proc the spin doctor. Unfortunately, that got them a credit. Now they have... An ice. 
Do we just breach here? Oh, we can't steal an Ikawa. That's awkward. Oh, for... Well, that's upsetting. Uh, what are these? Do we we don't want them to have a grease in the bomb. Um, we kind of don't want them to have a wave because it shuffles the deck. So I think then. Well, unfortunately, now we've got no way of doing it. Do we know what ice we moved here? We don't. So I think we leave this like second down. Done. I, I'm not actually going to say action because I don't want them to pop the Spin Doctor. Like, I would like R&D to remain the same. It was a wave. Oh, well, that's annoying because that shuffles the deck as well. <laughs> um. Okay, so we could face plant R&D next turn. Get some credit, we lose a card. The problem is now if we run this Spin Doctor, then they do derez this Tithe and the Tithe becomes better. We know HQ is two bloops. Potentially mean. Well, that's scary. And that's annoying. Now they have money. Okay, so now we need to go back to our other plan of, like... Oh, uh, well, if they res this wave... Then we inversificate for it somewhere. And that's quite good. Or we let it fire, then we go back. Well, let's do. Let's hit this. Okay, that's pretty good. We've got another cataloger as well. Did they draw last turn? I think I want to set up this turn more. Um, we can play this, it'll draw a card. That's good for the cataloger. We'll draw again. That's good for next turn. Okay, so next turn. Oh, we got a core. <laughs> got about the core damage. Uh, so next turn, we can rigging up the cataloger. Then we bravado R&D. Unfortunately, I think all their Ikawas are in hand. We kind of... Well, I guess they're pretty hard to steal anyway. This feels like an Ikawa push. It's not an Ikawa push. Or if it is, they're not scoring it next turn. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Burner's useless. That's fine. We'll do this into R&D. Here goes the cyber sand. Are they de-resin this bloop? Surely they're not de-resin this bloop. They do not de-res the bloop. Okay. Uh, will match strength... Did they... I assume they searched for something here. What did they search for? Tithe. Yeah. What a surprise. Uh, you have to click the bravado here, otherwise it doesn't work. We're going to swap wave with another ice. We'll put it here. Yeah, maybe they should have trashed this instead of the orca. It's fun, isn't it? Right, I think I would need to do the second cataloger. Does it show me which one it is? We'll find out. Hmm. That's not what I wanted. Okay, uh, I don't think I want them to have a Jagirandi. Rashid is interesting. Don't really want them to have the grease in the palm, but I think the wave is absolutely fine. They can have the wave. Jagirandi can go to the bottom. I think something like that. 
and then we'll just draw and we'll draw and we still haven't found our harmony we do still have one in the deck right oh sugar they're on hollow man well that's a really good reason to have to run the remote they're just scoring out an Ikawa here. I'm all right with that if they do. That's a lot of money. Or they do that. They still have five clicks. What are we doing with five clicks? Greasing, hedge, double of arts, and click for credit. Something like that. The annoying thing is, is that we know that this outside ice on server one is a thimble rig, and we do not want them to raise a thimble rig under any circumstances. Because thimble rig is really good for them. Okay. Kind of scary now. Um, they didn't really draw any more cards, did they? And they didn't really shuffle the deck. Let's draw for Harmony. Didn't find it. Let's draw for Harmony. Didn't find it. It's, it's going to be the last card of our deck, isn't it? We haven't lost it, have we? Here's one. Uh, so we can run R&D. If this is a wave and they res the wave, if they res a wave and they search with it, it'd be a massive error on their part. But I think we just kind of hope that they make those errors. Please be a wave and please search for an ice. The other option would be to maybe uh, kind of want to do something about this thimble. Like, I don't want to run server one because if I run server one, then they get to res a thimble rig. There's a lot of reasons I don't want to run server one. I feel like next turn they score an Ikawa, right? We know they had one in hand. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, inversificator makes this whole thing a little bit, a little bit nonsense. There's nonsense ice-wise going on their side, and there's nonsense ice-wise going on on my side. Like we're probably going to have to surf whatever it is in. And they might be. I think they're considering de-resing this bloop. Oh, is this a pulse? They might just be, yeah, they could be considering resing a pulse because that would be, oh, oh, okay, okay. I guess the cyber sounds are pretty sick here. Um, just doesn't shuffle their deck, which is a shame. Five credits to break this sodding thing. Do I just let it fire? Could let it fire. I think I have to let the second one fire. The other thing 
would be to move this onto server 1. So that next turn I can run server 1. Ah, it's still hard though. I don't know enough about server 1. Hey Podrig, how are you doing today? Um... So, if I move this to the outside of server 1, the next turn I can surf it in a little bit, which is potentially good. But doesn't get me past everything. If I let this fire, I have to trash something as well. It's potentially not great. And it will draw a card, and that will be a harmony, and then I'll lose the harmony to the tithe. So I think I break this. Uh, I do no to that. I hit this one. We let this fire. There's the harmony. I probably let this fire. Don't think money is really the thing that's going to do anything right now. Uh, do I catalog it here? I don't actually think I do because I know the top. So we're just going to breach. We'll see the wave which we knew was there. And then we either harmony now. Is there a spark left? I think we harmony now for... Because we're going to be really, really tempo pushed here. Um, I mean, we're just going to need to get our breakers back. I think we do actually get the other harmony. Because we're... It doesn't feel great, but we're going to get a spark. Uh, we're going to get the orca. And probably just the gamble. Okay. Oh, it wasn't the it wasn't the Ikawa. Oh, that's really problematic. Okay, so either we run here now, or we just hope that we get it with the cataloger. I think we have to hope that we get it with the cataloger. The question is, do we install the orca off the cataloger? Off the, like, into the depths run? So we can install the orca if we want. And then there's a chance that we can still challenge this remote. This is better than dirty laundrying. We're just going to do this. We're going to let that one fire. We're going to let that one fire. Hopefully, we don't like draw one of our breakers and lose one of our breakers. Yeah, the only, like, this is where um, uh, Anicam is potentially quite bad because it can draw us into the, like, one thing which we just put back. Okay, well, we can't install the Orca anymore off the Into the Depths. Do we want to install the Lobo Cement? I don't think we do. Uh, so we're just going to let this fire as well? Yes. Okay, it didn't, it didn't, hit, the, it didn't hit the good thing, so that's good. Do we want to... Put this wave somewhere. We could move the wave. Making it much easier for us to potentially run through here. Hmm. 
I don't think they need a seamless. This just wins next turn. The Hollow Man just wins. I can't ride it in again because I've already. You you can only do Investigator once. Uh, thinking about Investigator. I know the outside is Thimble Rig, so that I can break. But then they move, but that doesn't really matter. So I could put it here. I could put it on the inside. We know that these two are bloops. One of them is probably a pulse. Could well be a pulse, which means that we possibly can't steal the aqua, but we could trash the hollow man. So I think we do move this. I think we move it to the inside. It seems like the best place to put it, right? I mean, hopefully we just win. <laughs> what I'm hoping is that we just straight up win. The question is, do we put the lobisome? If I'm being honest right now, I'm just happy with this deck to not fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is... this. This one's doing well. Um, face tanking, uh, bloop with a credit short. Turns out to be quite the issue. <clears throat> now we could install the Lobosome so that we can deal with barriers but i kind of don't feel like barriers oh they are on hargan is one of these hargan do we know that one of these is hargan i can't remember that far back um okay right into the depths first swap wave yeah we're gonna swap it with this we're going to breach the server. We'll gain four. We'll charge this. Do we want to install the Lobosome? It's so hard because I think we do, just in case of Hagen. And then we'll use one of these catalogers. Hopefully we just win. We do not win. They are on Unsmiling. That's terrifying. Well, that's all quite bad. Jaguarundi can go to the bottom. Unsmiling Serevna can go behind it. Uh, I don't care about them having the hedge fund at all. So now we have to run here. Do we draw once first? No, we just run it. Uh, I guess if they thimble rig here. So here we just bounce, right? And then we run back. We've already inversificated, so we can't do that. Is there any chance we bre break this to get one extra counter? I think we possibly should have just run through here. Because if this is pulse into Ikawa, then we should have just continued. Like, we can stop them scoring the Ikawa, but now they can do other nonsense. It is an unsmiling Serevna. We don't quite die. <laughs> um, and we do get through it. Uh, we have to trash something, right? Uh, we'll trash... Uh, do we just trash for Steve? 
It's kind of useless to us, right? This is fine. Oh, they are wrong greasing the palm. Uh, but potentially not on any, like, anything good. Uh, they can have a credit, right? It's not the Ikawa. How is it not the Ikawa? Oh, we can still remove attack. That's fun. Can't steal an Ikawa here now. Do we want to remove attack? Do we want to remove a tag? Do we just want to draw? I'm just going to draw. We've got a spark, which is pretty useless to us. We've got to five, though. Like, they can fast advance out of three two, but I don't think they're on three twos apart from Luminal. So they could score another Stegodon, which doesn't really help them. Unfortunately, they've now got their Fimble Rig scored, which like is genuinely problematic. They are... Oh, I haven't... Uh... That spark is one HP, yeah. I have just realised that they're on Unspiling Serevna and Jaguandi. So there is a chance they're on like some tag punishment. I mean we can still run we could run this server. Probably not anymore. But we do kind of have to. Okay, how bad is R and D? The tithe is fine. This is just at the start of start of a run, isn't it? So I just let like I run and if they do Stegodon then I I let this fire and then I go back. Unfortunately I lose my kit ability then. And it cost me five credits to move the sodding thing. Draw one. Uh, maybe I should have run first. We could draw again, and then we could overclock here. Like, this doesn't stop us. This doesn't stop us. So this, the combination of these two ice, has to stop us somehow. I'm going to draw again and then I'm going to... Ooh. So we could gamble then go. I think we probably need the money from gamble. That will draw one card. What's our last card? Oh, our last card's harmony. I think. Which I'm actually going to need. Yeah, that's annoying. How much is that to do stuff with Inversificator? Seven. Or six with Lobosome, but then I can't move it anywhere. Hmm. Do you think this is a win? I don't think it's the win. So I think I just break this. And then try and hopefully win next turn. Don't really want to move it anywhere.
Okay, let's see if that's wrong. So we could play Harmony and Spark. The problem is, like, we don't really have the money to do this. Like, we have one credit on the prepaid. Harmony plus Spark is, like, five credits. Gets us our Orca back, but then I still don't think that we can break anything particularly well. We do break these Unsmiling Serevnas for two credits, as long as they don't use Stegadon. Can we just camp for remote now? Maybe we can just camp for remote now. Kind of depends on what this ice is. Like, they secretly have a ton of money because this cyber sand is actually worth a load. So maybe I have to just... Oh, but they've got the thimble rig, which means they can move stuff around. Hmm. I think we have to just camp this remote. Because I have no idea what's on R&D anymore. The outside is like a tithe. Well, this is the Ikawa, right? This has got to be the Ikawa. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to do this. Uh, we just want, like, money and our Orca, and that's it. Gamble. Um, is it the Telewet? It's definitely an overclock. Uh, it's... Definitely a creative, probably a bravado, because if I ever bravado the server, that's pretty sick, right? Yeah, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of ice. What's the other best money here? Daily cost is too slow. It's either the telework or the bravado. Thing is, the bravado run, I, I'm winning on that turn. Like, if I'm making it through all of this sodding ice, and it's not the Ikawa, then what am I doing? So I think it might be the telework. Okay. Then I play this before I accidentally draw my Orca. Then I draw. That's, like, the perfect first clip for next turn. Oh, this has got another thing. You can spend hosted credits to pay install costs. Anyone ever read that text? I never read that text. That makes so much sense here. That's how they've afforded this like mountain of ice. I was like, why is their cyber sand suddenly got no money on it? So next turn we play the gamble. It's a perfect thing that we, perfect thing that we drew. One of the two cards left in stack is an overclock. Yeah, they've got they've got to make this play. They advance it three times. Very interesting. It's very interesting. Right, we need to have a click left. Oh, we drew the overclock as well. So, do we just overclock first and then potentially jack out and go back and set any chance? This is like such a weird triple advance play rather than advance, advance, take a credit. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to die to something here. This like feels, or it's going to be a Stegodon, like that's just sat there. I mean, I've just got to go for it, right? 
Is there any... Uh, do I die to an enemy? Yeah. Definitely. I definitely die to an enemy. This is fine. So we'll just take a tag. They haven't really done anything with these tags yet. I think we do this... Then we bounce and go back. Because we don't want to have to boost for the rest of these. Pulse is going to be frustrating here. And they are on Pulse. Um, that will win them the game. Luckily, these are all two credits to break. We also still need to have two credits when we get to the bottom. Um, oh, I was going to say, if this is a bloop, this is really uncomfortable. But this is fun. Oh, no, he dies for brain damage. <laughs> I mean, we were going to die to this uh, net damage anyway. I don't think we can break this. Oh, we can. But I don't think we can break this. We're so close. We're so close. But I think we're one short. Yeah, we needed four to break the Serevna. We needed four. Brutal. Well played. Fifty seven minutes. My goodness gracious me. Oh, there was another bloop there. Okay, well, we screwed either way. Um, that's a disgusting server. <laughs> um, echo and remote, right? So the fact that... So Thunderbolt, actually pretty relevant here, I think. It's made these bloops... Six... Or something. Ugh. Well. That was long. Um... I mean... It probably would have been fine if we had been able to break the bloop on R&D when we played the Into the Depths. Uh, I didn't. I thought this was only once a turn. I thought we were pretty much safe against everything. I didn't realise that it then triggered again off of it. Like, I know you can only de -res stuff with it once a turn. Um, Nightwide Turtok. Well... I kind of wanted to build this other version of this, but it's like pretty late. Oh, hey, how's Pobble? Pobble, Pobble. Um, it's pretty late, but there is a fun alternative version that you can do with this. Uh, why didn't we trash that unprotected asset a while back? Because I didn't want to run anything to give them uh, the ability to uh, res and de-res other bits of their ice. Um, there is like a weird reasoning there with Stegadon being out um, and I can't remember exactly what it is but there there is um, I don't like two Lobosame one Orca uh, because I, if you spend your second spark and you get a second Lobosame it does nothing for you um, I'm confused about Triple Advance too but there we go uh, if I didn't break all of the blue... Well, funnily enough, so Orca actually says break all the subroutines. 
So there wasn't any way of me like choosing to not break some of them. But also if I didn't break all of them, then they trash the Orca with the Trasher program. And then I lose to the net damage off the Unsmiling Serevna. Or I just lose to the, the core damage off the, um, uh, off the whatchamacallit. Off the bloop. Um, yeah, most people have never run Orca until literally like this set came out. Um, but to answer the question, I don't like two lower so many. I, I kind of went back over it earlier, but it feels really bad if you if you play a second spark and you get a second lobber something because it does nothing for you. So that's why we're playing an inversificator as our like second decoder because then inversificator still has utility even if we've got a lobber somme out. Um, two class act, yeah, is is an option like you do have like a lot of imp that you can kind of play around with um but i think there's potentially like there's probably other ways around it so i don't know if i'm gonna have time to actually play a game with this but here's here's my other philosophy on this so this is your like ideal program suite okay you don't need uh you don't even need the Anacam. You don't need any extra MU. You just need these two programs and you're good to go as kit. Now, we have got a new card, which is really, really good if you only have exactly two things to install. Okay, which is Wizard's Chest. Uses hardware only if you made a successful run on HQ, R&D and Archives this turn. And then you can like look at, you can say program. I want to install a program. And you can look at your entire deck and see two cards and choose which one to install. So obviously you can choose to install the Lobosome first. Pretty brilliant. Um, but then you've got this problem of like, yeah, but how are you going to make those runs to start with? So this is where... Uh, this is where this idea comes in. So what you do... Is you play free compile and free wizard's chest and you're kind of trying to get ones off really really early possibly even we've got like space influence space for like an inside job or we could play boomerang or something uh boomerang's actually probably the right choice um but compile being really good in this instance because what we just want to do is like make some very early runs like free early runs on centrals and then install our wizard's chest and potentially the other free influence here like the best option is you play something like tread lightly um so you kind of really punish the you can like tread lightly one of their central servers they're like well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna res because like what's the best you get like a single and then you compile that other central server and then you run archives and then you install a wizard's chest and you get your level summit out free. Is that better than Spark? Don't know. Um, you can then use your wizard's chest to find your like other stuff. Um, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. But this is a, there's like a definite option here you could also like kind of do this and you could play some number of like gabali uh gahaba. oh who knows how to spell that conga Marse. um the other version of of this card the better one which says that you can break one subroutine and this is a, a virtual resource so this wouldn't kind of um this wouldn't proc the wizard's chest and as you're playing the wizard's chest you could even possibly get away with playing like one alternative program but i think that's probably a bit risky um but yeah this is like another option and i probably haven't got time to play it now or the brain power to play it now because i've had some pretty intense games tonight but i want to try this out at some point and see whether there's like some way of of doing this instead just because you know oh uh, you could take out the sparks here obviously Maybe you still play one? No, we don't play any because um, that's how we're going to get it. So that's like, oh, look at that. That's perfect 45 cards. Boom. That's a way to do it. 
Uh, and then maybe you can use your wizard's chest to help you find your like DJ Fenris later on, or your cataloggers. Like that's a really good thing to like. Okay, next turn I'm gonna start cataloging you. But as for that, I think that's probably me done for tonight. But thank you very much everyone for for joining. We've had like a ton of people in chat, which has been really really great. Um, yeah, in some matchups, sparks into Orca as a first breaker does feel really bad. Uh, it's why I'm now playing like a second decoder. Uh, but I don't want I don't want it to be a second Lobosome. I did talk about this being um an Ingolo, so that you've still got something which you can which you can use on sentries because you just can't use a lobosome on sentries if there's more than one ice on on the server obviously um your other option is like maybe you play like flip switches which does have a reason to play it anyway right now so that you can kind of challenge and still feel okay if they suddenly res a stavka and you feel pretty bad or if someone reses a bloop that you can't break for instance um yeah this is a really fun deck we had a ton of fun with it tonight we did lose the thunderbolt game but there we go um it feels really really strong cataloger is nuts burn is really really good um and just the whole thing like lobosome feels like pretty much the complete package thing you forget so with that uh i think i'll say good night for now but thank you very much join me next week don't know what i'm doing next week maybe i'll build thunderbolt next week I haven't actually played Thunderbolt yet. I haven't played Nuvum yet. I should probably set, play some Corp this week and actually work out what's going on with these new cards. Um, but yeah, if anyone's got some suggestions for what they want me to play, then stick it in the comments. I'll have a little look. Um, I'll probably look at playing one of the new IDs just because I haven't really actually done that yet. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Good night.